Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke Part 3. Today we're going to attempt to take on Watson. We go into Rustfaro Tunnel and grind up Bali to level 25 where he evolves into Celio. We then take Mr. Briny's boat to Slateport where the beach is absolutely littered in trainers. Seriously, as soon as we land, we actually run into a battle. Like, straight away. We had no choice. It was a relatively easy battle, but I forgot I needed to get a few potions, some antidotes, and some Pokeballs since we are on a whole new island, and I know this beach is not going to end anytime soon. A new area unlocked obviously means new encounters, that means more members for our team. Now hopefully we get something good and not something trash like a flippin' ladybug. In one of the very first routes there is a fisherman who gives you an old rod, and this old rod catches a lot more than just Magikarp. I also pick up the EXP share from the Devon Corporation worker just in case we need it. In this game, double battles are absolutely awful, and you want to avoid them at all costs because the opposing Pokemon could definitely team up on only one of yours, and then there's really not much you could do about it. Now there are a few unavoidable double battles battles that you absolutely have to do, and that's why I recommend you grinding up to an insane level like I'm at right here. We then destroy everybody in the soda pop shop, haha <laughs> that rhymed. The only reason we do this is so we get half a dozen free soda pops, now soda pops are actually one of the best healing items in the game for their value. As I'm delivering these parts to this nerd, a couple team aqua members come in, and they have a full team of 6 and are no joke whatsoever. One of the team aqua grunts actually has our Dratini at level 16 who has dragon rage, and it always does a set 40 damage, and at this low level, 40 damage is a lot. Then some dude with a beard comes in and says hello and then disappears. Now I have played Emerald Kaizo before so I know in this water there is a Squirtle and I'm not sure if that's the only thing you can catch in here but we have to get super lucky and hopefully get a Squirtle. And luckily for us we in fact do get a Squirtle. Now Squirtle has an awful catch rate so we have to be careful. I bought some great balls just for this. I go ahead and switch into no use so I could use Thunder Wave and once Squirtle is paralyzed and damaged just a little bit we're able to throw a great ball and capture Squirtle. I end up naming Squirtle blue because he's blue. Surprise, surprise. On Route 110, we run into a level 15 Nuzleaf, which is our next encounter. Earlier, I accidentally KO'd a CDOT, so no harm, no foul. I named Nuzleaf Sid after Sydney, the Elite Four trainer. The next major battle we have is with May. May does have a decent team at this point, a full team of six, so we do have to be careful. She leads off with a level 20 Minum, and we end up going for Bite, doing a good amount of damage as we get hit with a Thunder Wave. No, you then gets hit with a Thunderbolt, doing just a little bit of damage as we finish off Minum and only two more bites. Next out is Nidorina at level 20, and I had no idea this thing had drill run, but it ends up connecting, hitting Yeet for a lot of damage, but luckily we're able to finish it off with a Magnitude. Next out is Crocnaw at level 21, and we switch back into No Yu and hit it with a Wild Charge, taking it out. No Yu is kind of low, so we switch out into Bali to take out Pidgeotto with an Aurora Beam, as we take out Charmeleon with a Bubble Beam. Grovel does hit us with a Giga Drain, but it's not quite enough, as we're able to finish it off with a Flame Wheel and defeat May. Yeet got uncomfortably close to getting knocked out there. We shortly arrive in Malville City where there is Wally like always wanting to go challenge the gym, but we end up taking him on in a battle and of course it's going to be easy like always. Funnily enough, in this game he has a level 70 Ralts instead, but no need to fear, this thing only has Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split. I send out Scrambled because I know Ralts can't really knock us out as we do have Soft Boiled and we easily take out Wally. After the Wally fight, Scrambled evolves finally into Toka Kick. It's not really useful right now, but I might be useful in the future. We finally have access to the daycare center, so this is what we're going to be using primarily to level up our Pokemon, as we really don't have a sweet scent user, so it's really hard to grind. In Marvel City, there is a patch of grass which contains normal type Pokemon, and this encounter rate is absolutely awful like always, but we do have intentions of catching a new team member. It takes a very long time, but eventually we do run into our encounter, and it is a Porygon. Now, Porygon isn't the best, but it does have some potential. I end up capturing Porygon and naming it Virus because of... I don't know why. <laughs> it has something to do with a computer, right? It's it's man-made, it's, yep, it's something like that. Close enough. Our next encounter, unfortunately, on Route 117 is Beautifly. Now, Beautifly is not very good, but in this game, it does have an okay moveset. After a few Pokeballs, we end up capturing Beautifly and aiming it Butterfree, because I'm just a comedy genius. While I am grinding up, we are using Yeet, and we unfortunately get hit with a Bone Rush, doing four times super effective damage, taking Yeet out. I'm actually really upset set Yeet died here. That's really unfortunate. We could have really used a strong fire type like Camerupt, but unfortunately this random trainer with the random Cubone had to take him out. Can I get some Fs in chat for Yeet, please? After beating this trainer, I smack him and then run to put Yeet in the PC. As we put Yeet inside the dead box, we say goodbye. As you can see, look, it's Hulk, but don't worry, Hulk's not actually dead. I forgot about Shiny Claws and that he can't actually die. 
but he comes back in just a little bit. After grinding up a few levels, we do make it past these really annoying trainers as we only have one more left. No you is at level 41, so I'm pretty confident that nothing could take us out as Collector Sean sends out a coughing and we take it out with one Thunderbolt. Next up is Electrode, and I literally say in the stream, what's he gonna do, explode on us? And yeah, he does. He, he, he. <laughs> Oh gosh dang it. No you was one of our strongest Pokemon and it goes down to some random trainer's electrode with explosion. Oh my gosh. We can't even fight Watson now. Watson has two Pokemon with hidden power grass and one hidden power grass would absolutely destroy island. It looks like I'm gonna have to grind up completely new team members just to stand a chance against Watson. I decide to shove Sid into the daycare center. Once Hulk is back from the dead we level him up because we're gonna use Hulk to take care of the two hidden power grass users in Watson gym. At level 33, Hulk wants to learn Brick Break, and we do teach Brick Break instead of Karate Chop, as Brick Break is by far the better move. We are also now going to evolve Hulk. Now, I may be a little biased, but Shiny Primeape actually looks pretty cool. I like this, and it also has immunity from dying, so that's gonna be really helpful throughout this entire run. I get Sid out of the daycare at level 38, and we also have Hulk at level 38. We're gonna get them both to level 40, and then we're gonna go attempt Watson. After a little bit later, we do end up getting them to our desired levels. This is is our team going into this fight. We have Hulk at level 40 with a Cherry Berry in case we get paralyzed. We're gonna use him to take out the two Hidden Power Grass users that Swampert cannot take care of. Bali is here just in case we end up losing and we're desperate, and Sid is here for backup as well. Level 40, it should do pretty well. Alright guys, let's go into this Watson battle once and for all. We lead off with Primate because I know he leads off with a level 28 Jolteon, and he is one of the Hidden Power Grass users. I'm pretty confident since we are level 40, we're able to outmuscle Jolteon since it's only a level 48. Right off the bat, Jolteon goes for Thunder Wave, but we do have that Cherry Berry that I mentioned earlier, and we instantly cure Paralysis. As we get hit with a Thunderbolt, we use Thrash, and we take it out in only two hits. Next, Watson sending out a level 28 Electabuzz with a Lumberry, Psychic, Thunderbolt, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch. No Hidden Power Grass, so we switch into Swampert. Somehow, our Swampert ends up outspeeding this Electabuzz as we hit it with a Mudshot, taking it out in one hit. Next out is a level 29 Ampharos, and he is the other Hidden Power Grass user, so we have to switch out into Hulk and take care of it. I'm not really Really sure what to hit Ampharos with here, so we go for Brick Break, doing a lot of damage. As we get paralyzed, he also goes for Thunder Wave, and it's kind of funny because he wasted a turn. We do get hit with a Thunderbolt, doing a good chunk of damage, but with one more Brick Break, we take it out. That's both Hidden Power Grass users out of the way, so now Swamper is free to come in and sweep the rest of his team. Watson sends out Lantern, who goes down with only one Mud Shot. Next out is Raichu at level 28 with Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt, Surf, and Body Slam, and unfortunately for him, Raichu doesn't get to use any of his moves as we take it out with one super effective Mud shot. Now that Raichu is out of the way, next up is Manetric. Manetric does have a pretty good variety of moves, but the only thing that could really hurt us is Crunch, and Crunch ends up doing almost no damage. That went better than expected. We were definitely prepared for this gym battle, and once again, grinding always pays off. We received the Dynamo Badge from Watson, and unfortunately along the way, we lost two of our best team members. You never really know when you're gonna lose your team members, because we did get taken out by two random trainers. We had a huge level advantage on both of those trainers, so it's crazy to see both of them going down like that. I was looking for the Rock Smash guy, and for some reason, they moved him to Vanderf Town in this house instead of the one in Marvel City, and I actually kind of panicked because I thought they moved him somewhere and I wasn't paying attention, but eventually I did find him. I finally found a use for our other main key. We're just going to use it to teach it Rock Smash because Hulk is just better in every single way, plus Hulk can't die and Will Mankey can, so we're just going to use this as an HM slave. Now, on our way to Fallover Town, there's actually a couple forced battles, and it's actually really funny because Hulk and Island both have Rock Slides, so we just end up spamming Rock Slide, taking everything that's in our way out. Now on Route 112, we do have a new encounter, and our new encounter ends up being Absol. Now I really have mixed feelings about this because Absol isn't the best, but we could use it, I guess, for type coverage. Then again, we do have Sid here, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna use Absol for at this point, but if Sid unfortunately ever does bite the dust, we do have Absol as a backup. Absol starts using Body Slam a lot, doing a lot of damage to Sid, so we switch out into Island here, and we do get paralyzed, but a few great balls later, we end up catching Absol. I end up naming Absol XD because... Ah, no excuse, that's just a bad nickname. On our way to Fall Harbor Town, we do run into some Team Magma Grunts guarding the entrance to Mount Chimney. This Team Magma Grunt leads off with a level 26 Haunter, and I just had a bad feeling about it, honestly. I was going to attack it with a Muddy Water, but I had second thoughts and switched into Sid instead. And I'm super glad I did, because Haunter ends up going for a Giga Drain that probably would have taken out Island, because Haunter has really good special attack. These trainers were really not that bad at all, as we did have type coverage for every single Mon that they did have. Some trainers I cannot 
not use Island because if they have a grass move and they're decently leveled and they have a good special attack, Island usually goes down. But there's other trainers that Island just absolutely destroys. We are going to have to level up some more soon just to stay safe. There is a lot of Team Magma Grunts with pretty decent teams at the bottom of Mount Chimney making sure we do not get in. It takes a little bit, but eventually we do fight our way through and finally gain access to Mount Chimney. But guys, we did beat the third gym and I add just a little bit more extra content for you guys because you complained in the last video and I completely understand. Hope you guys enjoyed like always and if you did make sure to hit that like button and comment down below and I will see you guys in the next one.